<laughs> His word, the apostle. You already know what apostle means. If you do not, I thoroughly advise that you look up the definition of apostle. So now, an apostle is one who has seen Jesus and lived. So I was not told in the instructions when I saw him. I rationalized that as being a stern and thorough confirmation for me personally to trust in him. And that's what I do. We do it all the time. So now, what we going to talk about today is something that you guys in the community don't seem to comprehend it. You understand me? I can't get out. I can't figure out for the life of me. Yes, I can. You're all, all agents of the devil. You're all working for Satan. Because anytime you ignore the book or remix the book in order to maintain your uh, fraternal brotherhood of useless uh, domestic violence, that's a problem. That's a very serious problem that you must uh, take care of on your own time. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about independent Israelite elections are our only means to escape Babylon. I guess the title was too long for for the book on the face, right? But right now, at this moment, what I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to share my screen. As the Jordans say, all right? As just as the Georgians say, to share your screen. That's what's going to happen right about this time here. Okay, I think I shared it. Did I share it? Do y'all see that? Good. Okay. Now, this is my bookie of the faceness. And where I'm going now would be Agenda 21, the United Nations. Going to the United Nations website. Ha ha! We in here. Yes, word, the apostle. You got, uh, we on the United Nations website. Welcome to the United Nations. Now, these people uh, are exposed to information that you ain't exposed to. You understand? So they study things and converse about things that mm, try to solve world issues, you know, the crime and all this madness and buffoonery that everybody does everywhere. <laughs> Except for the problem is that they find themselves not guilty. So now we're going to be talking about Agenda 21. It was oh, in 1992, whatever that means. Agenda 21 is a comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations system, governments, and major groups in every area in which human impacts on the environment. Let me read that again slowly and carefully for you. Agenda 21 is a comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations system. Now, this system, uh, if you were to go on this website here, uh, the United Nations.org, right, you would see the system that it's talking about. You can join that system, and you people don't do that, so therefore, you just get ran over. Anytime they choose to run you over. 
uh, governments and major groups in every area in which human impacts on the environment. And it's not talking about just the uh, nature. It's talking about social environments and economic environments. Okay. So you got Agenda 21, the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development, and the Statement of Principles for the Sustainable Management of Forests were adopted by more than 178 governments at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. That's what UNCT means. Held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Meaning that there's no extradition from Brazil. So if it was done there, <laughs> that means that any criminal can hide out in Brazil. So clearly, this was uh, <laughs> devised in criminality. 3 to 14 of June 1992. That was a long time ago. That's why you forgot. I ain't, no, I ain't forget. I ain't forget. I was born in 1978. The Commission on Sustainable Development, or CSD, was created in December 1992 to ensure effective follow-up of UNCT to monitor and report on implementation of the agreements at the local national, regional, and international levels. It was agreed that a five-year review of Earth Summit progress would be made in 1997 by the United Nations General Assembly meeting in special session. The full implementation of Agenda 21, the program for further implementation of Agenda 21, and the commitments to the Rio principles were strongly affirmed at the World Summit on Sustainable Development. Held in Johannesburg, South Africa from 26 August to the 4th of September in 2002. And you can download that PDF if you want to because you need what you need to do is get involved in this so that we can be the meteor that uh, hits the Babylonian statue, the feet of the Valmione statue that I like to call the Steel Kingdom. The feet is the Steel Kingdom, S-T-E-E-L, which is no uh, coincidence that it sounds exactly like S-T-E-A-L, the Steel Kingdom, because that's what they do. Now, we're going to go here and learn a little bit more and unpack the Agenda 21 right now. You like to hear it? Here it goes. It's an international group. It was founded in 1990 before Agenda 21 with the sole purpose of implementing Agenda 21 worldwide. They say they represent 600 million people in 70 countries around the world. And most people have never heard of them. Now they call themselves Local Governments for Sustainability because they realize we are waking up. We are aware. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, clearly uh, non-factual because awareness can only reside in the mind of the Most High. Understand? So the Most High is sprinkling the slightest bit of awareness into society based on the uh, realization that the Israelites have figured out who they are and have disturbed their peace. So, and so, oh, excuse me, <laughs> I, I got to pick my words a little more carefully our awakening the Israelites realizing our nationality has disturbed their war so their war is a perpetual war against the Israelites and against the Most High so 
we're disturbing the war and they're uh, making contingencies to uh, rectify our disturbance of their war. Uh, but it never works because the Most High always has our back. So the only people on the face of the planet who are aware, or as they like to say today, woke, are repented Messianic Israelites. Repentant, I don't use that word lightly at all. Who do all of the above, they, I mean, all of the below, excuse me, they, they keep the laws, statutes, and commandments and perform the prophecies. Those are the only woke people on the face of the planet. So this includes those who keep my eye, and these, this includes people who keep the uh, moral tenets of any uh, religion, because uh, all of these uh, moral tenets were established by Israelites in every single religion. That includes Buddhism, uh, Zoroastrianism, uh, is Islam, uh, Confucianism, and so forth and so on down the line. <coughs> Israelites are in every country and uh, have been uh, migrating throughout every country in the earth for thousands of years. And everywhere we go, we establish the law. Uh, this uh, started clearly with uh, Noah teaching his uh, children uh, the law. And uh, it went down to the ever wise Abraham, who is also known in the ancient history as Hammurabi. They have the same name. Abraham and Hammurabi is the same name. So Hammurabi means the multitude of Ur, the father. Uh, Abraham means the father of the multitude. <laughs> All righty. So all of that wisdom of perfect socialization, a perfect treatment of others, uh, which I call allowing life to thrive, right? So the only purpose that every human in, on the face of the planet has is to uh, cause life to thrive at its full efficiency. This uh, tenant is the only thing that pleases the creator of this place, who is the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. You understand that? So you got to rewind it a few times because I'll be talking so accurate that it sounds strange to people. I think it was around 2005, I was elected to Citizens Oversight Committee for a huge redevelopment project in my town. And uh, when I was serving on that committee, I found that, in fact, it was a fraudulent project. And uh, in bringing the information, you know, sort of innocently. Yep, I got to pause because uh, you're looking at white people, so you're very distracted. Second of all, her voice sounds weird. Third of all, she's using language that you uh, really have an issue uh, processing in your mind, right? So she said she was uh, elected to some redevelopment project in her area, and she found out that the redevelopment project was used to still attract monies to them to their project and then not use the monies for its intended and publicized purpose. 
but instead they were using it for uh, their orgies and and lavish trips and things of this nature. That's what fraud is. To the town, to the city, I found that you know they were gunning for me immediately, and that was sort of, sort of my wake up call to the reality. Okay. This is what happens when <coughs> people uh, try to call out frauds, uh, Fabian Society members, uh, uh, and any type of corruption, any form of corruption. When people try to call that out, uh, the corrupt people already have contingencies plans to use gangster tax tactics so most of the time they use ridicule and slander in order to uh, get the public to think that the person the whistleblower is either lying or has uh, skeletons in their closet quote unquote in order to uh, make the public say well, I no longer care. It's too complicated. It's just, I don't, I don't understand. Let me go back to sleep and watch uh, uh, all of my favorite shows. And who cares? As long as I'm taking care of my kids, then I'm good to go. Problem is, you know, your kids won't have a future because these people, all they do all day long is try to devise and figure out how to destroy Israelites. You understand me? You know, it's not like um, Area 51 or Catch-22. It's a real plan. It was signed on to in 1992 by the United States and 178 other countries. It's the action plan for sustainable development. It is the plan to inventory and control all land, water, minerals, plants, animals, construction, means of production, education, energy, information, and human beings in the world. Yeah, that's uh, significant. And so we just read that plan in the beginning of the show. You can just rewind back and watch the very beginning where we uh, read the entire Agenda 21 summary. Now, when you uh, unpack and read the entire plan, then you will find some discrepancies that won't sit well with your spirit and uh, need to be tweaked. There's a lot of things in this plan that need to be tweaked, and uh, we need to get heavily involved in their quote-unquote manipulation. Okay, so they're all they're doing is is running normal governing processes, building processes. And so their minds can't come up with the most equitable uh, performance on behalf of Israelites. So it's up to you to get involved in the processes so that you can uh, control the narrative and get everything lined up properly according to the script. You gotta stick to the script. See, you see, the great and terrible Oz is not scary at all. You understand? Toto, the little tiny little puppy, exposed the great and terrible Oz. And then since I've been talking about it lately, they started showing it on the TV again, on TNT. Yeah, and I saw it. Make it, yeah. You can take, you, can, you know, make all the money you want to make. You ain't stopping nothing. The Most High already got this thing planned out perfectly. I mean, and the Most High is not Allah. You understand me? So Allah has to plan. The Most High says a thing and it happens. So there's a big difference. You got Allah, the planner, the perfect planner, and then you have the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who says a thing, and it returns to him perfectly completed. So, 
That's how it works. The thing that is really incredible is that it, you know, it's not something that's way out there like in 1992. It's right now being implemented all over in every town. And of course, it's all over the country and all over the nation. You know, this is, it's an arrogant plan that the idea of regionalization, of course, here in the United States, we have city, county, state, and federal. And we elect all of those levels of government. That's, you know, the people have representative government. But regional government, regional governance, is unelected boards and commissions that actually make the rules and direct what happens in your city, county, or state. That's very significant. What I'm going to do, I'm going to let you watch the rest of this video while I uh, use the rest of roomy, right? And I'll be right back. So in this case, it's MTC, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, and ABAG, the Association for Bay Area Government. Right. These are regional boards. They're going to be directing what's happening here in the Bay Area for 28 years and restricting our land use. There are 500 metropolitan planning organizations in the United States. So this is, it's all over the U.S. And it's, of course, it's around the world. It's a crazy plan. It's not, we're not crazy. The plan itself is right. crazy. And they use these uh, sort of visioning meetings, you know, are actually using a technique to sort of channelize political thought or, you know, people's opinion into a predetermined outcome while giving them the impression that it was all their idea. So aren't you smart? You yes. created that plan all on your own, even though it's the identical plan all over the United States. People who get invited to those visioning meetings are people who are already on board. They are the consultants. You'll find them voting. Oh, it's a great plan. They're going to vote for it. You'll have unelected people who are on boards and commissions. You have people who are coming out of the neighborhoods who have been identified as being willing to go along to get along. Those people are often elevated to positions of power. They're elected as neighborhood association presidents by default. No one shows up. They say they represent the entire neighborhood. And this is who the stakeholders are considered to be. And you know, what's unsustainable? Private vehicles, private single family homes, tillage, livestock, air conditioning, appliances. Right. These are considered to be unsustainable or right. according to this plan. Because it's a global plan, but it's implemented locally. And uh, people are eager to get this information and to also to understand that this is not a conservative or, uh, you know, point of view. You know, it's difficult to hear this when you're progressive. It sort of contradicts your entire worldview. You know, because the educational system has indoctrinated children uh, all the way up through to postgraduate school in okay. uh, sustainable development principles. It is global. It's all right. over in every country. And uh, most every country has a local Agenda 21 guideline and program. So I think what's happening now, though, is that awareness is really coming to the fore because awareness is the first step in the resistance. Well, I think they do know better, but the deal is that, of course, they, you know, these plans are set up to use the Delphi technique to actually channel and propagandize the public right. into the, uh, the outcome that is desired by this plan. So people who are serving, you know, our local officials are being propagandized by their own staff. Right. And the staff, of course, is being propagandized by the American Planning Association, which put out a 12 week long boot camp about how to handle people like me who are telling the <laughs> truth about these plants. This is really an indoctrination plan, and it, it's really about taking away your individual freedom, right. your right to uh, have and own and use your private property. And our nation is founded on private property ownership, and we are losing our freedom. And that is why we are out there trying to get people on board to assist in working on that. You know, if you're in the county, if you're in an unincorporated town in the county, or if you're just out in the county, literally this plan says that 100% of development has to be within the urbanized areas, basically taking conservation easements over the entire county areas in the San Francisco Bay without paying for them. And literally you will not be able to build in the county areas. You know, Agenda 21 is about empowering non-governmental organizations and regional boards so that, and these are not elected by us. The way that I think about it is if you're looking at something that doesn't make any sense, it's probably Agenda 21.
Globalization is the standardization of all systems, and Common Core is standardization of education. If you don't have enough people using public transportation, let's pack them all into, you know, these areas right near the stations, you know, the train stations, and then we'll have people using transit. But this is, you know, this is also part of controlling, inventorying, and monitoring, surveilling all the populations, and this is the plan. Children are being indoctrinated. Through outcome-based education, they're being trained. They're not being taught, they're being trained to be obedient, to not ask questions, to not dissent, to go along, to get along. This is part of this plan. These are the people who go to the visioning meetings. So what is the goal? It's an ideology. It's not just a design style. It's new urbanism and it's anti-rural. You are being told that it's an economic driver that if you don't join together with your regional group, you're going to get bowled over by all the other regions, right? That you're going to go under, that you're not going to be able to compete. This is now that's an important point. I got to stop there. You're not going to be able to compete. First of all, I got to make a correction for her, and and I got to apologize for her stupidity, because the Most High owns all land. So he put in place these governing systems that have the uh, will power, the motivation to set up the governing systems. And what we need to do is weed out all fake uh, law from the governing systems. The only law that should be in place is the law of the Most High. So I apologize on her behalf for her stupidity. Now, when they uh, privatized the land and decided that what they stole, they're going to uh, own themselves and say it's mine uh, is a problem. And what you're getting ready to hear in just a second is that the government will own all private land. Okay, they can try, but with your involvement, they cannot uh, do that. So all land is owned by the Most High, and we should be allowed to grow any type of food we choose to save us all types of money. Because when everybody was growing food back in the day, Food was very cheap because the grocery stores did not have a monopoly on food and can't raise the rates very high because we grew our own cattle and chickens and and uh, vegetables and beans and fruits on our own properties. <laughs> so they couldn't charge you a whole lot at the grocery store. Uh, now they uh, chose uh, to be stupid and say that uh, you can't sell your food across state lines. So when people found out about that, they stopped growing food in their yard on their property. You see? And what that did was raised the food price to a lot of very high. Then they had to implement and try to uh, make it look like they were helping us out by issuing food stamps. You know the food that you used to grow in your yard? Here. Here's the food for free in the, by way of food stamps. So ain't that, aren't we great? Don't we help? You ain't help nothing. What you did was raise the food price too high. And people can't afford food. So they have to go put their foot very aggressively on the front of somebody's door uh, that looks like they have more monies than yourself. And then you go in there and then you take all their jewelry, and then you pawn it. Illegally. All of that stuff is illegal activity.
They say, we've been helping y'all out and you want to be, you want to be criminals. That's all what you want to do. But what they're doing is trying to design people to be criminals because, and they hoard information that, and we don't understand how to use they fake ass system that's in place. You see what I'm saying? So <clears throat> it's up to us to get involved, learn the system, weed out the buffoonery and the corruption and the world would be a better place. This is genius, really, honestly. This plan is so progressed. It's designed to fail. It's designed to take your transportation dollars and pound them down a rat hole. That's what it's about. It's about taking your money in every possible way. This is a plan to sink our economy. Social equity. This is where this is going. Regions, livable communities, sustainable communities, community partnerships, one planet community unelected boards and commissions they said land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market oh no private land ownership is a principal instrument of the accumulation of wealth and therefore it contributes to social injustice public control of land use is therefore indispensable. This is the goal, is to take land out of private ownership and move it into control by the government. You don't even know where your city council meets. You think it doesn't matter. But those are the people who make the rules that you live under right there in your town. And you better believe it does matter. And don't tell me that, you're, that your government is so bad that, you know, that you can't do anything about it. It sure looks like that. But the thing is, is that you've let it get that way. And that's a, that's a strong point that she's making there. Uh, everybody in the world is afraid of government and whistleblowing and, and, and righteousness and holiness and uh, uh, voicing our opinion on the levels of government that the Most High has set in place for us to uh, uh, inherit. You understand? So <laughs> we could easily uh, deal with the government at a high level, on a high level. Uh, but everybody's too afraid. And this is where elections come in at, because if we have our own governing and governance, then we can influence other uh, industry we can influence industry, we can influence business, we can influence banking to do what their mandate was when uh, banking in America was established. So the mandate of any bank on the face of the planet is to alleviate poverty from the, from the face of the earth. Uh, the problem is that they find it more effective and more efficient to eliminate the poor. So they starve you out or they might freeze you to death uh, thing, or cause uh, such violence to, to get um, people murdered and, and, and handle, deal with wars and things of this nature. So they're trying to uh, cause a civil war again in this land uh, in a few years by uh, they thought it was already going to pop off a long time ago because of all the police murders. Uh, but all that did was infuriate the uh, white nationalists. You know what I'm saying? So the white nationalists are already against the government as it is. <laughs> but they involved themselves in the government, the Ku Klux Klan and all the white nationalist groups. They involved themselves in the government so thoroughly, and they're the judges and the police and every every form of governing you see <clears throat> so uh life is sweet for them you understand so it's not sweet for us because we're not involved in the government now it's my personal knowledge that we will always be outnumbered in their governing system 
this is why uh, independent Israelite elections are so important because we can recreate uh, a, a perfect government. And I don't use the word perfect lightly. Uh, I'm perfect myself. And repentance is a part of perfection. So as we grow and make mistakes, uh, as soon as long as we correct it very quickly, then the uh, our government will grow be beyond their wildest dreams. So I'll give you an example of this. In China, in 2005, they were dirt butter ball poor, right? I'm not talking about Hong Kong, which has been rich for many, many years because it was owned by Britain. I'm talking about mainland China, right? It was super dirt poor up until uh, recently. So 2005, they were uh, the New World Bank loaned China enough monies to develop mainland China. And now today, they are vying and jockeying for position to be the, the leader of earth you understand because they've become so rich mainland china has become so wealthy that they think that the money can uh, put them in the position of the ultimate superpower of the earth now uh obedience overrides money at all times so our government being will be so obedient that uh, it will attract monies un unthinkable and unheard of in the history of governing. You understand that? This is why Israel independent Israelite elections is so urgent and important. And it's perfectly legal as well. Just to, I want to add that. This is why none of my shows ever get flagged or shut down uh, because I speak all legal and lawful information at all times. You understand me? This is not for entertainment purposes. This is all legal and, law and lawful uh, speech. It's just like uh, an entertainer, right? Kevin Hart says a lot of stuff, and I laugh. And everything he's saying is legal and lawful. So if he were to make that statement on stage, everything I'm saying is legal and lawful. <laughs> I, would, I probably would chuckle at that, especially how he says it, how he delivers it. So I'm telling you that they can't, uh, uh, they can't approach you talking about you are performing uh, illegal law. You know what I'm saying? Like illegal activity because you're speaking. The only thing that's illegal about speaking is inciting riots, inciting war, inc inciting violence, and things of that nature. You understand? So even insults are not illegal. You understand me? So let's get moving on. If you continue to let it get that way, it ain't going to get better. So what you need to do is actually occupy your government to take a term that I think was really misused to actually go and be a part, be your government. So do that in the interim of us setting up elections. I'm going to get into that in just a second because I got the full budget for uh, independent Israelite elections. Yeah, we're in the end game here. I, there's not a lot of time left, so you know you should have been doing this a while ago. But the thing is, is that you need to know what Agenda 21 looks like, and you need to recognize it so that when you see it in your city, you can go and talk about it. You can, first of all, get yourself elected. You can run for office and not get elected, but talk about it. You can stand, you know, up in your city council every.
every single item on that agenda is probably related to Agenda 21, if you know what you're looking for. Take down their Delphi meetings where they're manipulating public opinion so that you won't make trouble for them. Because really, they don't want you to make trouble. They're hoping that they don't have to bring out the cops. So they're really wanting to you know, keep you in your seat and keep you at home quiet. So that's what you don't want to be, is the person who sits at home. So you want to take this on, you want to spread this information, you can do it with flyers, you can do it with mailers, you can spend a little money, you can make some videos, you can share them with people, because just knowing without doing something about it is simply not enough at this time. So you have to become more politically active. Right, right, right. So she's right about some of those things. And the, so we can do that in the interim until we uh, set up elections for ourselves. And, and you know, we will, like I said, we will be known as the world's holiest government. And that in itself uh, attracts uh, an untold amount of funds to your economy. Okay. So. The budget for uh, the elections is as follows. Let me stop sharing my screen. So, okay, we got a, a few years of, oh, well, one year of web hosting and web, web development uh, or an app development, right? <laughs> that costs $7,000. Cost like something like thirty five hundred dollars to uh, to develop the app, and then it costs something like thirty five hundred dollars to host the app. Okay, so this all this does is count uh, the candidates and allows the candidates to sign up to the app and. Uh, post themselves as candidates and then it allows uh, live Zoom and StreamYard debates in order to prove who has the best plan and the best doctrine, biblical doctrines in the book, who has the most accurate biblical doctrines in the book and determine who uh, has the best plan and the most men to carry out that plan and women to carry out the plan that they uh, have devised. Now, when I approach any school about this information, they act like they don't forgot how to read the book, right? So if I show you here, let me show you something here, right quick, right fast, right? Okay, uh huh. Go in here. Go to blue letter. And I tell you this right here. So let me show you what the black is doing, right? Hosel. I should have just went to one. Yeah, Hosel one. Right? Now, it clearly says here in. On seven, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the most high their power and will not save them by bow. I will not save them by sword. I will not save them by battle. I will not save them by horses. I will not save them by horsemen. Okay, so that's clear. But the black and say <laughs> otherwise. Now, here. And Hosea 1 11 it says, Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel, the southern and the northern kingdom, be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for a great shall be the day of redemption. So it clearly says here that the people are going to appoint themselves one head. Now, if I were to ask five Israelites who that head should be, one person is going to say this guy, one person is going to say that guy, one person is going to say the other guy, one person is going to say the other other guy, and the other person is going to say the other 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 guy. That process of determining who that head should be is 
<laughs> called elections. Right, so it says here in Roman 9 and 11, it says that uh, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calls. The most high is the caller, and uh, we can choose to answer. Well, we can't choose to answer because the most high uh, will convince whoever whomever he wants on his team so this is election this is a uh, description of the children is esau and jacob so they were not yet born uh, neither have done any good or evil for that the purpose of the most high according to election might stand not of works but of him that calls. And most is the only one that calls us by his name. That's why his name is Israel. And so he called us by his name, which is Israel. Even so, then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So you see the election in here, right? That's because election of God. Knowing, brothers beloved, your election of God, the Most High. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. You see? So we have to make our election sure. And this is why the word elect let me see if elections plural is in here maybe not no it's not see it's called election now look how many times the word elect is in here 17 times in 17 verses behold my servant whom i uphold mine elect in whom my soul delights i have put my spirit upon him he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Wouldn't you like to do that? Bring forth judgment to the Gentiles for all their corruption over the millennia? For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called you by my name, Israel. I have surnamed you Israel, though you have not known me. <laughs> And I bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah and an inheritor of my kingdoms and mine elect shall inherit it. So you have to be elected in order to inherit the kingdom. And my servants shall dwell there. Who is his servants? His servants are clearly Islamites. Islam are the servants. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Now, you remember the curse that says we're going to build and not uh, live in the house? And we're going to uh, plant and not eat the flesh? You see? You know that, that curse. But see, in the blessing, we will build and inhabit. You see? We will plant and eat. We don't have to go to the grocery store uh, with these high prices and get that food over there that they sacrifice to Satan. No, we don't have to do that. We can grow our own food that was properly uh, slaughtered and kosherly uh, done. You understand me? For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. But you not deceived. You are the very elect. It says that they 
if it were possible, if possible, it says if possible, really, because when it says italicized like that, they uh, make it sound better for modern English. If possible, they shall deceive the very elect, but it's not possible. You're the very elect. You're the ones who's going to uh, carry out elections, get people elected, and so forth and so on. So the total price of elections is 7000 bucks. All you got to do is donate to this right here, blackredeem.com. That's all you got to do. Nope. i tell you what. Or go to Cash App right now. Go to Cash App right now and go to Black Redeem Me, right? This ain't this dollar sign. I was thinking of Cash App. So this is the website, blackredeem.com. Let me show you that right quick, right fast, as the Jordan say. Blackredeem.com. You go here, donate to American Future. Boom, right there. And looky, looky what pops up. Buying back our communities. Uh, the perfect plan for us to escape Babylon. That's all you got to do. And then, uh, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to do that, then you go to, you go to, uh, you go to uh, dollar sign black redeem me on, on cash app. And you donate seven thousand dollars. You donate seven thousand dollars a piece. We would have reached our goal with the first donation. That's all you got to do. And so the the elections will be set up perfectly. The the uh, <coughs> budget will be um, transparent and publicized twenty four hours a day of how it, the monies are being used. You see, so that way you can hold us accountable, and we are a pretty large team. You understand me? Something else I need you to do is go to our ADDI.org and get involved with that joker ASAP. The sooner you get involved with that, the sooner you can get you some dual coin, right? And uh, uh, as a member of ADDI, you can get a, a dual coin at less than a third of the price so uh, you can buy something for less than a third of the price and then instantly resell it for three times the value that you bought it for uh, that's a come up that's a crazy come up you know what I mean? so now if you want to get fancy with it you want to get real fancy with it right You go here to blackfolksplan.org or dot com. Hold up, I just did something wrong because that's the wrong site. They said I missed the right site, but then I moved it. Didn't I say, folks? Blackfolksplan.com. Okay. Oh, they want to. They want to try to hide it right now. Okay. You can go to any one of those and get get the information. But the the point is the Friends of the African Union, right? You join the Friends of the African Union, and now you getting real fancy with it. But the best bet is to deal with us with our ADDI.org. You see. Yeah. I'm talking to you. Okay. But this is this is they got a an amazing plan too. So you gotta you know what I'm saying, you gotta network with people if you wanna feel like you accomplishing some some stuff for the community. Okay. <clears throat> now in twenty twenty, 
after a long, grueling primary season and a year that has exposed nearly every conceivable flaw and crack in the foundation of the 75-year-old global American empire, it feels surreal to think that the general election of 2020 president uh, between President Donald Trump and De Democratic nominee Joe Biden, we announced to release the $6 trillion Black Folks Plan update on uh, November 7, 2020. No matter the American presidential vote outcome, on November 9th, 2020, we are submitting an unsolicited proposal as defined in FAR 2.101 to the U.S. government executive branch. An unsolicited proposal is a written proposal for a new or innovative idea that is submitted to an agency on the initiative of the offering company for the purpose of obtaining a contract to create a public-private partnership with the government, and that is not in response to an RFP, broad agency announcement, or any other government-initiated solicitation or program. So uh, you hear working with the government, and you get scared because you're dumb. That's what uh, Joseph became. That's how Joseph became the pharaoh of Egypt. Is because he saw all the problem uh, for the government by collecting the corn. So he was uh, head of collecting the corn for uh, the seven years of uh, uh, famine, and uh, so uh, so for some years, right? He collected all the corn for some years, and then when the seven years of famine came, they they didn't experience the famine in the land of Egypt, and his uh, brothers and father came to Egypt because all other lands uh, close by was experiencing famine. So that's our role is to make sure that the co the country and the government that we live in uh, does not fall. We're supposed to uh, do the same thing Jonah did for uh, for. Uh, the country that he that he was forced to uh, preach to, uh, forget it off the t forget the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, uh, so Jonah was forced to preach to a particular nation and tried to run away, and then he was swallowed by um, uh, some type of sea animal, which I think is a, a, a USO which is an un unidentified submersible object. And he was spit out on the shore and things of that nature. And then he preached to the kingdom. And then, <laughs> and then, he, uh, then he sat back like, I can't wait to see this place destroyed. And so he went somewhere and watched it. This is the spirit that you guys have. That you can't wait to see this place destroyed. That's fine, you know. I, I get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, I can't wait to see the place repent and corrected and, and and restored and fixed so that we can live comfortably. So, uh, as described in the cover letter, is to be a six trillion dollar reparation solution called the Black Folks Plan. So that's. Uh, uh, a real hefty, a real hefty plan. You understand, and it's and it's uh, very much doable. Now, uh, let me show you uh, Prince Michael. Let me show you somebody else here. If you want to get, there's nothing you can do about this guy. Uh, versus uh, Trump, right? Let me show you this Prince Michael versus Trump. Supposed to have an S on there. That's the problem. Prince Michael V. Trump. Mm. 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 Hey, that's up. Saint Michael. Let's say Saint Michael versus Trump. How about that? Uh,
Oh, they think they, they think they slick. Okay, trying to hide it, huh? So let's go to uh Saint Michael's page there. Michael Lewis, there it is. That's what I'm supposed to put on there. Saint Michael Lewis versus Trump. Right. Okay. So right here, uh, this is where uh, Saint Michael Lewis out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, my mother's home, hometown, and my grandmother's hometown, and my grandfather's hometown, uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. He, uh, Saint Michael Orris, sued uh, the government and the estate of Abraham Lincoln. All right, so in order to sue the government, you have to sue the president. This is why Donald Trump's name is is on there. And so uh, that's what happened. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I'm saying date filed. Uh, let's see. Date filed the court. I don't know the, the, the full update of this, but uh, that's a that's a good move. And he also sued Disney for using the, the, uh, the term Wakanda. All right. So let's go to uh, th was I sharing that? Oh, I didn't even share none of that stuff. Hold up a second. I'm supposed to be sharing all types of stuff. Okay. So let's go back here to the orders. Let's go back here. I can show y'all another stuff. Okay, so St. Michael Orders right here. This is the docket uh, information. He uh, sued the government in Georgia. And in order to sue the government, you have to sue the president. <laughs> and they uh, sued the estate of Abraham Lincoln. That was the black folks plan. Okay. And um let's see if I can share these real quick with you. Um, okay, that's fine. So what you do is you go to here if you want to uh donate the uh first seven thousand dollars. And then we would reach our goal instantly in order to have elections. And then if you want to uh, do the cash happy thank you, me, you go to dollar sign black redeem me and uh, donate the seven thousand dollars. All right. So that would be. I wanted to show you the black folks plan that I was reading earlier. Um, let's see if I can go here. Okay. So as you, you can see here, uh, there was a lot of uh, sites that they had that were updated, right? And the Friends of the African Union, they got a very strong plan. So I think this is what I was reading here earlier, right? You just go to this location here, Herschel Daniels Jr. page, and then you, if you want to read about this, you go to the, you just Google the Black Folks Plan, and it'll a lot of information will pop up. So everybody has strong, a strong plans, and my perspective wants to uh, create 40 cities and 40 embassies by the year 2027. Okay, so that should be just in time for the famine that they are manipulating to occur around that time, just just in time for the same amount of time, same uh, timing as the uh, Great Depression of the 1920s, you see. It's all, it's all by design, but if you get involved, uh, you won't have to experience those things. If we be the Joseph, you know, we can we can uh, stop a lot of this. They they're befooling. Understand me? So, hopefully, you guys learned something, and you need to donate 
so that you can have independent Israelite elections because that's our only means to escape Babylon. Uh, and the interim of uh, causing elections, while we're causing elections, you need to be getting heavily involved in your um, local politics and weed out the, the buffoonery and corruption that they try to perform on us daily. All right. Uh, today is Jesus' day off, so don't disturb his peace. He's resting. 